Hello, this is Pastor Roy again, and I'm on fire this morning. Because if what we believe is true, and it is, everyone who does not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, there is no other way. Everybody who does not have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ dies without a Savior. No atonement, no forgiveness of sin. They die in their sin. And I, I just hesitate to speak of their eternal existence. And you and I have the power and the commission to do something about it. Nobody can do everything, but everybody, bless God, can do something. So I'd like to review with you the tools that you and I can use. They are scriptural tools God gave us in the Bible that were used by the apostles and Jesus himself to speak to people about how to really have eternal life or, or be saved. Now what I'm going to uh, do is, is um, share with you is for people who have a basic understanding of the Bible and Jesus Christ. This will not apply to everybody at the beginning. Ultimately, everybody has to go through this process. But there are those who have no understanding, no background, no Old Testament, no New Testament. And there is special preparation to share the gospel with them. And of course, God independently from any uh, evangelism efforts we may do can, can meet with people as well. But these are the tools that we have, and I share with you, number one, this is the golden scripture, the, the golden nugget, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him, two things, they will not perish, and number two, they have everlasting life. You can share that with somebody. Simply share that. This is what Jesus, this is in the red letter edition, this is in red letters. So from that, we, we, we know that Jesus is speaking here. And he is uh, opening the door to heaven. I like to say we open the door to heaven as wide as scripture will allow us. Don't put hoops and hurdles and difficulties and demands on people that Scripture does not do. Whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now the, the second one uh, that we have in our toolbox that we can use is, for instance, uh, the book of Romans uh, chapter 10 and we use verse 9 here. And uh, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. In other words, Jesus is who he says to be, I admit it. Jesus is a God manifest in flesh. And believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Saved from what? Well, saved from as John 3.16, will not perish. They are saved from perishing. They are saved from spending eternity apart from God, His love, His grace, His mercy. Unthinkable. And here we can share that with somebody. You know, uh, do you confess that Jesus is Lord? Yeah, I am. You know, however they choose to answer that. And do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Well, you know, I always enjoy the atheist that when he gets into trouble, he says, Oh my God, oh Jesus, help me. Well, 
There, there's something going on in their heart that may not be going on in their head. But if thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, this is what happens. You shall be saved. The third one I have to, to, to share with you here is Ephesians 2. And I use two verses here. Um, it is by grace or the goodness of God you have been, past tense, saved through faith. Same thing as John 3.16, whoever believes in him. Uh, here it's through faith or belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not of yourself. In other words, even the ability to believe something that the world, by and large, would reject. God gives you the the understanding, the opening, the revelation to believe. And so it's through faith. And that is God. It's um, Even that faith is a gift of God. And then it goes on to say, you know, not of works like him, the less any man should boast. In other words, it doesn't come by being good, being Mr. Goody Coo Two Shoes, trying to uh, stop uh, sinning. <laughs> Lots of luck. Uh, no. It doesn't happen that way. It happens by the goodness of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, this is a synopsis version of the series that we have done on the uh, five uh, lesson series on personal evangelism. But then this is a magnificent portion of scripture in the book of Acts, of, uh, chapter 16, verse uh, 31, as I recall, the jailer, and you can read the background, but the, the jailer loses, he thinks, all his prisoners. That was basically a death sentence for him. And when he sees they're all there, uh, the prisoners have not run away, even though the jailhouse was broken open. Uh, he, he asks Paul and Silas this eternal question that's on the hearts and minds of people. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? In other words, there's, there's this ominous sense that the end is coming. Whether it be through the present virus that we're experiencing, the, the possibility of uh, every person on earth dying is 100%. Now or later, by what means, we may not know. But um, what must I do to be saved? Now, if anybody knows the answer, it's the Apostle Paul. And I would accept his answer as a scriptural answer. And he said, he didn't make it complicated. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Same thing as in the earlier scripture. Whoever believes on him. And uh, Ephesians, you know, we're saying by grace through faith. It's through our belief system, our trusting system. And he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And I question, you know, are you believing in the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm not asking you how good you are. Are you believing in the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, that's enough. It may not make uh, the angels dance because of our behavior, but the believing in the Lord Jesus Christ will make them do that. And the Holy Spirit has his ways of taking you from belief into um, discipleship and uh, being a follower of Jesus Christ. But there's a beginning, and this is the beginning. The next one I, I bring to you is a special interest because you, you would wonder how, how, uh, how it could be so simple and yet so profound and of eternal consequence. And this is in 1 John 5, verse 13. The Apostle John, I mean, he's the guy who was with Jesus to the end. I mean, he's the man to whom Jesus committed his mother. Uh, uh, as he was being crucified. This is the man in whom Jesus had great confidence. This is the man who knows what it is. And here he takes pen in hand 
And he, he writes in uh, 1 John 5, 13, he says, These things I write unto you. Okay, so he's writing. Unto who? Unto those who believe on the name of the Son of God. So he's writing to this group. Why? That ye might know. He wants them to know something. Dear friends, you can share this verse with somebody. Very simple. No argument, no debate. Just offer him, offer them the, the divine eternal life saver. He says, these things I write unto you, the group who believe on the name of the Son of God, that you might know something. What does he want them? who believe in the name of the Son, what does he want them to know? That they have eternal life. Why? Believe on the name of the Son of God. And then I thought this was interesting. It's a little longer one, but it's a, it's a prophecy in Joel that is repeated in the, the book of Acts, quoted by the Apostle Peter. And let me read it to you uh, in Joel of chapter 2, verses 29 to 32. God says, and this is um, adapted somewhat, I left some portions out. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Magnificent. Your sons and your daughters. This is not just for all folks. Your sons and your daughters. They will be involved in this to the point that they will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. There's visioning. There's hope. There's plans. There's, there's a future. There's, there's things happening. We are involved in this. And the Lord says, I will pour out my spirits even on my servants. In other words, the, the position in life does not matter. The fact is that you are a human being created in the image of likeness of God. Men and women alike take that and they will prophesy. And here it ends with, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, magnificently profound and simple. That's, that's the beginning. That's not the whole bag. That's not the whole thing. But it's the beginning. Every journey of a thousand miles, every journey to heaven begins with believing in the Lord Jesus Christ or even calling on his name. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why? Calling on the name of the Lord will give him opportunity to uh, give you more information. <clears throat> For instance, what does it mean to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Some people talk about saving faith or something like that. Well, you know, the Bible doesn't say that. And, and so we want to make it uh, as, as simple as uh, we can without diluting the profundity of its importance. What does it mean to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, I think the rudiment... Uh, belief is that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. He's God manifest in flesh. He's God the Son, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's the Son. God the Son walked as a man for one purpose, that he might die on the cross for the sins of humanity and my sins personally. Uh, and that he died on the cross as a substitution for my sin or what we've referred to as the vicarious atoning death of Jesus Christ, that he, he died for sinners and that he rose again from the dead. That's, that's I, th I think, is the kernel of what it means to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he came, he died, he paid the price, he rose again from the dead, and he's alive today. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. You can share that with people. People need to hear these profound, simple truths. And so thank you for letting me come into your home or wherever you are again today. And God bless you richly. And uh, we have a series, a five-part series on YouTube. If you'd like to see it under personal evangelism and under my name, Roy Olson.
Have a great day. Goodbye.